unlike anywhere else I've ever experienced. I'm so scared. I genuinely would say you, you can't miss this. Um, it's so, so amazing. So we are crossing on this replica of the bridge right next to the original remains. Okay, so that's where the actual bridge was. Yes, the moat was more like a ditch, yeah. not really filled with water, so they had no need for a drawbridge either. So, we have finally reached the main entrance, very well defended place, because our country had no kings, no queens, so who actually lived here? The master, <laughs> master of Livonian order. Oh, oh wow. So, welcome inside the monster's rooms. For the larger rooms, they even had a central heating system at hotel. Wow. So this was the fireplace? Yes. Wow. The bathroom? Yep. I I'm not really sure if the bathroom would be the correct uh, word because he was most likely not bathing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well. Even himself. <laughs> Here on that seat, which goes down to the moat. And you see, he even had a nice view. Well, he's sitting there. <laughs> can check out the surroundings. There we go. And be aware. <laughs> if some uninvited guests are coming <laughs> and trying to sneak up through the toilet shaft, which has actually happened in really? history. Not in our castle, but in some other places. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, that's brave, isn't it? This is master's private window. That's a nice window. You can see a lot of things from here, including the entrance. Finished. Yep. So, 1245, the next invasion is already in its way. <laughs> These are the flags of the, each particular master ruling at that time. Oh. 1577. So what I want to tell you here is a story which is unfortunately not very nice. It's quite a tragic one, but nevertheless very important in the history of our castle. It's the story of 1577, a time when, like I said, the last of the masters, the greatest of the masters, Walter von Plettenberg died. So you can imagine what kind of decline it was for the order. And it happened that the 50 years of peace with Russia expired and the new Russian Tsar, Ivan IV, better known as Ivan the Terrible, decided that Livonia is not as strong as it was back in the days of Plettenberg and decided not to extend the peace treaty anymore and restarted the hostilities. Oh, wow. And in September of 1577, after the order was defeated and the last master disbanded what remained of the order, the Russians, using the weakness of our land, came here in mass. The Ivan the Terrible arrived to take our castle himself at the head of his army with 11,000 
troops wow. huge army so it was clear that there's nothing but that people can do about that mm -hmm. when it was clear that the russians will break in sooner than later <laughs> then these people decided what they're gonna do at first they contemplated a surrender but they heard the news there is a good reason why Ivan the terrible was known as a terrible that nickname was very appropriate considering that he was known to be torturing his prisoners by burning them alive and so these people decided no matter what we don't want to end up like that so instead of surrendering and being killed in slow painful way by the russians anyway they decided to blow themselves up with the gunpowder so these all 300 people decided that it's better to commit a suicide rather than to surrender. Mm -hmm. And for a very long time, we did not even know if this is an act actual event, maybe just a story, mm -hmm. <laughs> just a legend. And relatively recently, only some 40, 50 years ago, we discovered actual evidence. So not the nicest thing to be proud no. of. We have, we have gone down in a history, not just of the Latvian, not just of the Baltics, but of all 16th century Europe as mm -hmm. the site of the largest mass suicide. Yes, this is the darkest side of the castle. So finally, we are down in the basement. Right now, we are storing some uncovered cannonballs. But oh, wow. originally, this was the, their beer and wine cellar. Oh, the important stuff. <laughs> yes, right after the master's room. <laughs> let's go back out. This is the where the basement was, mm -hmm. where we found all the bodies and wow. the money. That's why we erected this cross to commemorate this tragic thing. Here is the one lady whose body was discovered with the help of uh, the British specialist helped in the reconstruction of the hair face. So you found ladies. the bodies here? Yes, so this is quite a dark place. Wow. Tragic sight. Very, very, very quickly, let's keep inside the other tower. Look inside there. This other tower where I'm taking you now is the place where they had their dungeon. Oh, wow. <laughs> All the good stuff. <laughs> so I think uh, that's the right place where I should put you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm getting left in yeah. the dungeon. <laughs> it's cool. And through the dining hall, we are the southern tower and let's climb down first to the dungeon so this is the place where they would put misbehaving brothers <laughs> not the common criminals just the misbehaving brothers not really <laughs> yes those who broke some kinds of rules let's say there was a brother who was caught in a bed with a woman doing the deed <laughs> and for such a Crime? He has to stay one year in prison to cool down. <laughs> and so we made a multimedia story. A couple of famous uh, prisoners oh, wow. can be seen here, and you can pick one of them, and he will write to tell his story. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! And you can press the meet him, and he will come himself. <gasps> no way! <laughs> That is so clever. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's down there? Yes. <gasps> no, that's so scary. <laughs> so the place we are now is just where the guards would be standing. Oh so my the actual God. prisoners in the floor below. So, so the room is pretty much the same size as this one. Right, okay. So this is where the guards would be yes. and then down this here. Is down there. Ooh, and it looks like that. Yes. Wow. Very dark place. That is terrifying. You can imagine 
one year. I, don't, I feel like it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Make it uh, so not as, uh, uh, how to say, not as uh, desirable thing to do. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> Oh, so century inscription. It's only been open for two years. This tower, yes. This tower, yes. okay. The castle itself, no, but the, this tower. And here in the first floor, where we have a story of the fence, like each one with the shooting hole. Ah, yeah. And there's uh, one weapon. Looks so old fashioned, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but not, not old fashioned for the 16th century. No, yeah, quite modern for the 16th yes. century. <laughs> and medieval down because it was all connected to one defensive system and each illuminated part will have a description in here telling how tall the towers were how many shooting holes each one of them had wow what what was the thickness of the wall yes in some parts even five meters Wow. And what kind of uh, area could be covered? It looks like a decoration <laughs> from outside, but here you will see the purpose of that. It's made in such a way that you can attack the enemies who are already at the foundation, at the bottom there. Basically, you can throw everything on their heads from here. But they can't get to you. Yes. Oh, in English, so uh, this thing is called, in quite an appropriate way, murder holes. Oh. <laughs> Delightful! <laughs> yeah, we go pretty much almost around and here in some parts we have even the wooden parts surviving. Oh wow! This one is actual wooden part from a 16th century. So in things we have found and it will be displayed. Wow! <laughs> wow! And that's a modern way how to show the things without actually putting them here in a conditions which would not be very suitable for such old things like these old discoveries from the 16th century. So I just had the tour of the castle and he was such a great tour guide as well. He made it really fun and informative. The history was incredible too. I, just so much I didn't realize. And it's really incredible as well how they're using technology to really bring to life some of the history as well because they can't actually rebuild the castle. So what they're doing is trying to just maintain and preserve it. And then using technology to bring to life some of the for example, stories and things that they've found that they can't store there and the history um, in like a visual way. And it's just incredible. I've never seen anything like it. If you come to Latvia, make sure to take this trip. You could easily do it as a day trip. It's about an hour and a half outside of Riga. So yeah, you can't, you can't miss this, it's so good. All right, back in the car, gonna head to the guest house now before I head off to Alina, who is a local. I'm going to her house to celebrate midsummer. The traditional Latvian celebration to celebrate the summer solstice and the connection with nature. And to be honest, it sounds like something that everyone should be doing. <laughs> so yeah, that's why you see all of the flower crowns and the guys have the oak leaf crowns. So I'm gonna go there now and uh, check that out. We try to make it authentic. The entrance, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so here's the key for your room. This is your room. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 